Thanks for tuning in to another starting lineup report on Prime Sports Network for the NASCAR Cup Series. Atlanta, Quaker State. That's the logo. It's the 400. It's in Atlanta. And as you can see, it's race number 27. The first race, though, of the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs for the 2024 season. Let's get right into it. Look at that smirk on the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Well, that's the way I see him. And that's Michael McDowell because, once again, Michael McDowell is on the pole. So uh, not a big surprise, especially since he is driving a Ford. And Ford is clearly the story of the day. The combination of Ford and Toyota. Ford on the good side, Toyota on the bad side. We've got a link in the description for the show that CJ were doing from Rotowire and I did just a few days ago. We do it every week, usually on Tuesdays. And we let you know uh, what we think about the race. We go over all of the key drivers, the odds at that time, uh, historical trends, stats, anything to help us, uh, of course, our picks uh, to get you ready for the race early in the week. I'm here on a Saturday and every day of the week when there's qualifying. Practice sometimes does come the day before, but qualifying, that's when I show up. And it's usually a Saturday, and I can get you up to speed on what's going on with the speed charts. And that's what we're going to do right now, care of Jayski. So let me roll them on down and check a look. Take a look at Ford. Look, just 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 take a look at this. Okay, look at that. Ford, 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 Ford. Oh, there's a Chevy. Ford. Oh, there's another Chevy. There's another Chevy. Ford, Chevy, Ford, Ford. Do you know that? Ford had seven of the top 10, the top five, the pole sitter, nine of the top 13. But what's maybe even more impressive is how bad Toyota has been. Look at this. Ty Gibbs, the very first Toyota. We talked about this, what, just a week or two ago. It, it was the same Toyota. I mean, what's going on with Toyota? But anyway, top 19 no Toyotas. Ty Gibbs, fastest Toyota at number 20. And you want to, speaking of Toyota, well, let's take a look at some of these Toyota drivers. Look at this. Reddick, 23. Uh, Bell, 26. And let's go even further down to the last place Toyota, the last place car, Denny Hamlin. Who, by the way, just said, ah, a couple of red flags. We'll check it out. We'll see what's going on. Yeah. Forget Denny Hamlin. Forget the Toyotas. We told you to forget the Toyotas the other day. That was our recommendation, and we're sticking to it. Well, why shouldn't we stick to it, right? After the way they've looked so far, coming out of the gates uh, here on race day. Matter of fact... Uh, taking a look at our uh, picks yet on Tuesday, uh, CJ went with Kyle Busch, so Kyle's going to start 15th, which is really about where he's been starting on average every every uh, week. Even when he's been doing better, uh, he hasn't really necessarily qualified better, except for maybe one race. Uh, Sindrick, he's driving a Ford. And then you've got Corey LaJoy, who's going to be starting a little bit further back than uh, he would have hoped. LaJoy starting back here at 25th, another Chevy. My top three picks were... Two Chevys and a Ford. So uh, here's uh, my top Chevy Byron, then my second Chevy Bowman, and look at Todd Gilliland, my long shot play in a Ford, right behind or just around in between is my boy, Ryan Blaney. So there you go. And and look, look, the, 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 the thing is, is that uh, we've been telling you this for now a couple of years. Ryan Blaney has solidified himself as the best super, speed, super speedway driver out there. And the fact that he's got a Ford uh, compared to Denny Hamlin, who's driving a Toyota, uh, that's even, I think, why there's a, a bigger gap, especially here at Atlanta. Because Denny Hamlin has done nothing at Atlanta. Okay? Since the next gen uh, and uh, Toyota and the super speedway change, nothing at Atlanta. It has not worked for Denny Hamlin, even though Hamlin has been much better, of course, on at Daytona and Talladega, and he's still considered one of the top three super speedway drivers, but not at Atlanta. That's why Blaney, in my mind, is number one, because Blaney has not been affected anywhere, even though, again, if Hamlin's driving a Ford and Blaney a Toyota, 
you know, we might be having a different story, a different conversation here. Chevy, meanwhile, as we mentioned, they've won five of the last six races here. They've won four of the five with the new Speedway configuration. That includes the next gen since 2022. So, uh, oh, and by the way, um, don't forget, we also mentioned that Toyota hadn't won a race here since 2013. That's 0 for 14. So 0 for 14, and nobody's starting in the top 19. So uh, one of our viewers asked me uh, in the comment section, we always welcome your questions, comments, anything. I mean, just let us know what's on your mind. It really helps the algorithms. It helps us with traffic. And we want to get the ball rolling. So if you have anything to say, just let us know. Uh, one of our viewers asked me, uh, who do I like between Larson, Reddick, and uh, who was the other? Uh, Bell. And I had told him that because of the fact that two of them are driving Toyotas and one's driving the Chevy. I'll take the Chevy. I'm not, as you know, we don't, CJ and I do not, we're not going to sugarcoat it when it comes to Kyle Larson at Super Speedways. He's just not very good. Even though he has been better lately, but just a little bit better. That's it. Just a little bit better. A little bit. But he's really still, that's his Achilles heel. But, but he's not driving a Toyota. So I hope, uh, I hope uh, anybody out there who had the same dilemma, uh, and again, the race isn't over yet. It hasn't even started, but uh, we look pretty good right now because Larson, as you can see, will be starting sixth. Okay, so now let's run through quickly. Uh, no practice, and it's Atlanta, Super Speedway, so it makes sense, no practice. So let's just see what we can do here based on what we also talked about on Tuesday, uh, just going over the position of the drivers and uh, some of the stats. Now remember, uh, Ryan Blaney, uh, is should be at the top. He's more than likely going to be the favorite now. He was 10 to 1. He was second in this race uh, earlier this year. And his last four with the next gen, second, ninth, seventh. Actually, just the last four in general. Second, ninth, seventh, and fifth. He only has one win here, not next gen, not super speedway. As, uh, interesting. But that was in 2021, just before the change. So Blaney, though, should be the favorite. And if you can still get 10 to 1 on Blaney, absolutely you want to take a look at ryan blaney uh kyle bush is another one just because of the way he is driving he's just right now getting to the point where you kind of feel that unless the not making the playoffs blues become a hindrance uh, as i mentioned the other day he's gotten better all five of his races since this the speedway the super speedway change including fifth and third in his last two third this year he led 28 laps he led 28 this year finished third. Blaney led 31, finished second. So, and again, Kyle is the top pick for uh, CJ. The reason I did not have Blaney as my top pick was only because of the fact that he's going through a little bit of a struggle. He's not as hot as he was earlier when we were just all over him. So that's it. Other than that, um, he is basically a no-brainer. He has to be. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, whether or not and look the playoffs are now starting it's a new season he's as of today uh, i i would i would definitely put blaney at the top now uh, he's got to be the top uh, the, the, the one to beat just again based on the fact that not look chevy's okay and they've won what four to five with the next gen they're definitely in there but ford is just so dominant right now after the way they looked in practice but uh we've seen some big crashes over the last several weeks and that could definitely change everything. Okay, Logano, uh, he led 140 laps in the race last year at Atlanta. Led 27 laps this year. Did not uh, finish strong, though. But he is in a really good position with his buddy pretty close by at 7th. And Logano's also going to get around the same odds as Blaney. Uh, also, I would probably take a look at, at Byron for sure. Again, he was my top pick. He looks good here, finishing uh, ninth overall. And he's got two wins with the next gen and the super speedway change. Two. Nobody has two here at Atlanta. He has two. So that's why I'm on top of uh, Byron. Still feel strong for Byron, uh, especially be because you're going to get a little bit better odds on Byron. You might still be able to pick up 14 to 1 on Byron as opposed to 10 to 1 on Blaney. Uh, meanwhile, Suarez. Look at Suarez. What a very disappointing result for Suarez in, in qualifying 30th. And, and his teammate, who hasn't had a good run of it, Chastain, uh, better at 18th. 
But Suarez has been very good here. He won earlier this year, leading just nine laps, but he was second in this race last year. He has four top sixes in five super speedway Atlanta races with a runner up and a win. That's very impressive. Now, he his odds were were, were, were 14, 15 to one on Tuesday. I think this becomes an advantage now for you because if you're going to get now 20 to one on Suarez, 18, something like that, go for him. Okay, just go for him. Remember, it's a super speedway. Qualifying doesn't always matter. So I would definitely take a look at Suarez sitting there in 30th. Again, only if you get good odds, though. Because Chastain, his teammate, has also been pretty good. But I just can't take Chastain. I just can't. It's just the way he's going. It's you know He's got to start picking it up like Kyle Busch for me to even consider Chastain. And then McDowell. He led 27 laps in this race earlier this year, finishing eighth. Well, not in this race, but on this track. And last year, finished fourth. So his last two, fourth and eighth. Now he's on the pole. And Gilliland, his teammate, uh, he led 58 laps this year. Did not have a good result. Tailed off. But that's very strong. Remember, he was 40-1 to one on Tuesday. That's why I took him as one of my long shot plays. And McDowell was... Uh, a much more beneficial 22 to 1. So that's why you didn't see me take a McDowell. I took Gilliland instead. The, 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 obviously, the odds are much better. McDowell, forget it. I think McDowell's odds are now going to drop just probably somewhere around 14 to 1. I still think he's, he, he's somebody that you should consider. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Gilliland now, maybe you get those dropping in half. Um, it's up to you if you want to take him at 20 to 1. I still think that he's worth considering. But. You know, uh, that's up to you. I prefer 25 to 1 as a minimum myself. Sindrick is also up there. And again, he has his teammates. Uh, he's he's going to be in fifth. And he has really looked good here. Uh, and he's been good in this uh, scenario. Super Speedway deal. Fourth this year. Third uh, in another race uh, last year. Or, or in 2022, I believe. His last four at Atlanta. Fourth, 12th, 11th, and third. He was 18 to 1. If you're still getting 18 to 1, definitely consider Austin Sindrick. And here's the good news is that we get it, it, very rarely, this might be one of the only times we will at Talladega possibly, but this may be one of the only times where we get to say something like, you know what? Let's forget about Larson, and he'll still get pretty decent odds. Uh, by the way, I wouldn't forget Dylan. Where was Dylan? Uh, where was his odds, Dylan? He was at. 40 to 1. So uh, if I'm still getting 40 to 1 on Dylan, I might even consider a buck there. But uh, Briscoe, how about Briscoe? Briscoe, the only thing with Briscoe is he's never had a top 10 in Atlanta. But he's coming in hot. He's driving a Ford. He was 35 to 1. If you're getting 35 to 1 again, just like I recommended last week to take to, to, to throw a buck on him if you wanted to run the same odds, I would say the same thing. Remember, this is one of those races where I, I you feel a lot better throwing like six, six, five or six one dollar wagers to make your money back, and you can see what's going on the last few weeks with the winners, the long shot winners, how that can definitely pay off. Uh, now here's Harrison Burton. I mean, here's the thing though. I mean, if Harrison Burton were to win again, I just think that'd be so unlikely that I would need to have odds of about fifty to one on Harrison Burton to even consider putting a buck on him. And let's see. Yeah, so here's another thing. Let, let, let's cross off some other drivers. Uh, now, Elliot, I'm not going to cross Elliot off, though, uh, because he has won here before on the Super Speedway. He led 96 laps in 2022. It was one of the first races here. So I'm not going to do that with Chase, but I, I don't know if I want to put, like I did on Tuesday, I'm not going to put low money on Elliot. You know? and, and, and unfortunately, I don't think you're going to get a break. But if you can get 14 or 15 to 1 on Elliott, I'd be a little bit more open to it than 12 to 1. Uh, so, But anyway, you can also cross off. Here's the thing. I get to cross off, uh, besides Larson, I get to cross off Redick. I get to cross off Bell. Uh, we, can often, we can also cross off Truex. Uh, so we get to cross off drivers that we don't normally get the opportunity to cross off. Um, unless they're of course, I mean, unless we're crossing them off because they're favorites and the odds are too low, but in, but I think you have to take advantage of that, and and, and that's why you got to spread around some of these dollar Ford bets. 
and maybe even a Chevy or two. So that would be that would be my consideration. Um, I did pick Kozlowski to make the final four. He's driving a Ford. Uh, uh, he was eleven to one. I didn't like him at eleven to one. Okay, this is not Talladega. All right, but he has been okay here. He's got a runner up, and his and I think it was uh, last year. Um, but I just don't like him at eleven to one. Maybe the nineteenth position will help me get fourteen to one, something like that. Where I, I just feel a little bit better on him. So, uh, and again, uh, my other picks, uh, I have Bowman. And even though Bowman does not have a good history at this track, he, I do like the fact that, uh, and I do think he's, a, he's one of the better long shots to get to a Final Four. So if you're looking for a long shot to get to the Final Four, I think Bowman's a good one. So if he can get off to a good start in this race, avoid a wreck, uh, obviously that could go a long way. He was 35-1 to 1 on Tuesday, and that's why I took him as one of my long shots just like Gilliland at 40 to 1. Uh, so I, I I just think that he'll be in a position potentially. Uh, you know, he, he does have Elliott. You know, Larson could hang around. He's been hanging around with these super speedway races for, for a while. So maybe he hangs around. And then if he can avoid a crash, I think Bowman, not the worst idea in the world uh, for a long shot, as long as you're still getting 35, 30 to 1. I don't think that's going to drop too much just because of the 11th position. Stenhouse is a really good super speedway driver. The fact that he was 45 to 1 and will start 27th, he could definitely be a play for a buck. He's driving a Chevy, so I'm not too excited about taking him at 27th with a Chevy, but he was 6th this year, so I'm probably going to do it. Eric Jones has also been pretty good at Atlanta lately, but I don't know. Forget it. Toyota, not interested. Uh, LaJoy, we know he's been pretty good. And even though he's 25th, I should be an advantage to you. He was 55 to 1. That, that's not changing because of this starting position. So go ahead and grab him for a buck. Josh Berry's 50 to 1. I'm not really interested in taking him, though. But, you know, if I if I feel like I could afford adding another buck to a guy like Berry, who was 50 to 1 on Tuesday, as long as he doesn't drop below 35 to 1, I would I would consider it. But I wouldn't consider it anything less than that. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. Now, again, Gibbs is the top Toyota. He does have two top tens in his three cup appearances at Atlanta, but he's never led a lap. And I'm just, again, not going to be interested in any of the Toyota drivers. And that will wrap it up. So I hope uh, between this starting lineup uh, discussion... And what we talked about on Tuesday, a link in the description. You can check that out. I hope that gives you uh, enough ammo to go out there and cash in a winner on Sunday at Atlanta, especially since you're going to be duking it up with the NFL for the first time in 2024. So uh, we're out of here. Don't forget to check back with us on Tuesday. Uh, it looks like that's when we're going to uh, record our show once again, which which means we, the shows are usually available uh, no later than Tuesday evenings. If it's not on Tuesday evenings, that means we could not record it on Tuesday, but we will get to it at some point, uh, usually no later than Wednesday or Thursday, but that's pretty rare circumstances. Next week, we're going to go ahead and preview the race at Watkins Glen. We haven't been to a road course in a while, so we're going to do that. We're also going to take a few minutes to uh, get you up to speed on what's going on F1. Uh, uh, they've got a couple of races over the next two weeks, so we'll have a little bit of F1 coverage. But definitely, uh, it's all about, or at least mostly about, our NASCAR coverage here on Prime Sports Network. Subscribe, like, share. All of that really helps us out with traffic. And again, we really appreciate everybody who takes the time to check us out uh, here on the starting lineup shows and also for any of our coverage between here and our motorsports channel, Mystery Caution. So that's going to wrap it up. We'll see you again real soon. Best of luck on Sunday.